everyone, here is a video explaining how I mimic this picture smocked train scene. I saw this on Pinterest and I can't find who holds the copyright, but by all means, if someone does hold the copyright, I will gladly take this video down. I just didn't see the smocking plate out there when I googled. So with that disclaimer out of the way, here is my recreation of this little train. I pleated my fabric using hole spaces. I started with the center cart of the train and did this out of a blue shade, DMC775. Of course, though, use whatever colors you wish. I just know that if I don't put the colors that I use, I will get some questions. <laughs> So, if you are new to picture smocking, it is typically done with four strands of floss. This gives a little extra bulk that is helpful in filling in gaps. And avoiding gaps is the name of the game when picture smocking. So, on the back side, I tie on by going through two pleats and then through them again to create a loop. And then I uh, tie on by wrapping my needle around the loop once or twice and pull tight. Then I took my needle up in the halfway-ish pleat. By no means did I count the pleat. I just eyeballed the halfway mark and called it good enough for me. So I did a cable stitch with three stitches tacked on top of four stitches like so. And then I took my needle back down to the halfway-ish mark and repeated that cable stitch four stitches stacked on top of five stitches to the other side. And then I had this cable stitch when I was done. Then I went down a line and did another cable stitch, this time three sets of columns, and each column had one stitch stacked on top of two stitches, and then this went on for four rows. And then I tied off using that same loop manner that I just described to you before. So moving on to the base of this cart, I went up one side of the previous stitches and did a row of cable stitches all the way across, and I repeated this five rows and then I tied off. Then I moved on to the cart that would be immediately to the right. So I just skipped say five pleats or so, definitely not an exact science here, and I don't know what shade pink this is. I'm really sorry. I got a bunch of these boxes filled with floss from other sewers who didn't want them anymore and this one wasn't labeled. Anywho, I went one row from the brown section of the previous cart and did a cable stitch row with eight stitches on top and seven on the bottom. From there, I went to the side of the fourth stitch and back down on the other side of the fifth stitch. And I did this a few times to establish like a little chimney or something on this cart. I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be, but it's on the smoking plate, so there you go. <laughs> Anywho, moving on, I repeated the same cable series four times, so I would have a total of five rows. And these five rows fill the same space as the brown on the previous cart. Then I took the 727 yellow color to use on the base of the cart immediately to the left of the center cart. Then I did a cable stitch starting on the bottom of the cart and again about five stitches, sorry, about five pleats away from the center cart. The cable stitch has eight stitches on the bottom and seven stitches on the top and I repeated these stitches, of course, rotating my work as needed until I had three rows total. Then I got this 840 brown color and did a row of cable stitches with just one less stitch than the yellow section of the cart. So this first row has seven stitches stacked with six stitches. Then the second row has one less than the previous or six stitches stacked with five sti stitches. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Moving to the next cart on the left, I went to that pink color and started level with the blue color and working my way towards the top of the cart. I did a row of cable stitches with five stitches stacked on five stitches. And I repeated that same five stitches stacked on five stitches for the next row down. And once more, to make a total of three rows, did another five stitches stacked on top of five stitches. After looking at the cart, I realized that I missed a stitch, so here I'm adding that in to make a total of five stitches in that line. And then I have three rows of cable stitches, all with five stitches in them. Then I did one more row of cable stitches, but this time with five stitches tacked on four stitches. And then I moved on to making the columns for the cart. 
there is a column on each end of the cart, if you will, and each column has a cable stitch of two stitches stacked on one stitch. And this goes on for four rows, since that gets me to my next pleating thread, which makes these columns level with the blue columns from the center cart. So to finish this cart off, I start to the right side of the cart, the side you know that's closest to the caboose, if you will, <laughs> and I do a row of cable stitches across the top and these stitches will extend a little bit I guess maybe for a little overhang it's kinda cute so you'll have a total of seven stitches on the bottom stacked with seven stitches on the top and then I tied off the pink and tied on that brown color to make the front of this cart I started at the bottom of the cart and did four cable rows of four stitches stacked on top of five stitches these stitches join to meet the pink stitches like a little puzzle, if you will. Again, so there's no gaps. Once those four sets of cable rows are done, then I took my needle up to the middle of that first stitch in the first row and went around that one pleat a few times. To finish this cart off, I took a darker brown color. And honestly, this is a bit too on the dark side, I think, but it was the closest color in my stash, so I'm going with it. <laughs> I finished this little chimney off with a cable stitch of two stitches on the bottom, stack with one on top, and again, two stitches. But this time, I put my needle down and come back to fill in the spaces on each side of that single stitch. So you'll basically have three rows of two stitches. And this gives a little rounded look, if you will. And then I tied that off and the cart was complete. So moving on to the last cart of the train, I went to the back to this lighter brown color, the 840. And again, skipped about five pleats or so and did a cable stitch with eight stitches on the bottom and seven stacked on the top of those. And I'm starting at the bottom of the rest of the cart, so all of these carts are roughly level. Now I'm starting on the front side of the cart and creating a column. This column is made of four rows of cable stitches, starting with two stitches stacked on one, and just repeating that two stitches stacked on one four times. Then I repeated those two stitches stacked on one stitch four times for the second column, too. This is like so many numbers. <laughs> the second column is just past the halfway mark of the overall cart width. And so to complete this cart, I did a row of cable stitches across the top that goes the full width of the cart because I did start two pleats away from the first column to again give a little bit of an overhang. So then I took the pink color and did a cable row that connects the cart to the train and it's just as simple as that. Then there's these little smoke puffs trailing off, and these are done with one stitch stacked on top of two stitches, and then take your needle down and come back up to do one more stitch. So you'll have this little cluster of four stitches for a puff smoke, and just scatter those as you see fit. Then on the top and bottom of the insert, I did a three-step trellis. So this starts with a horizontal stitch, then divide the space until the next pleating thread into thirds taking one stitch at each third mark and then finish the trellis with another horizontal mark and just rinse and repeat that. And so finally on to these buttons and aren't they adorable? They are super tiny and I will link them below. Okay, so to do the bullion stitch on a button, first you'll sew the button on like normal, just do a little straight stitch over just to kind of secure it down. Then bring your needle back through one of the holes and send it back down the other, except this time you're gonna leave a bit of a loop. You'll take your needle up again and use that loop to wrap around your needle. Make sure your threads are wrapped neatly. If they are not neatly on your needle, they are not gonna get any better when you pull your needle out. So you want all your threads to be laying flat, if you will, no twists or bumps in here. You want to wrap enough times that the bullion is going to be long enough to cover from one buttonhole to the other buttonhole. Then I pinch those wraps with my thumb and forefinger as I slide my needle out. And then you just adjust the bullion over, you know, kind of pull tight and send your needle back down. And there you go. Just keep repeating that. There are two buttons per cart. And finally, the last thing is the front of the train. I started this with 
three pleats over from the cart and I worked a cable stitch of two stitches on the bottom and three on the top and then there's one more stitch on the row above that just kind of sitting there I know that's not the most wonderful description but just look at the image and I think you'll see what I'm trying to describe and then I went from one stitch that one that's just sitting there at the top and did a trail of thread to the front of the cable stitches below and that sort of gives a little rounded off appearance to the front of the train and I'm, I am calling that done. The last thing you will need to do before you pull out your pleating threads is go on the back of this and do back smocking. So anywhere where you didn't have like the trellis on top and bottom, you can skip those areas, but anywhere that's just a blanket, open, white space, you're going to have to back smock that to make sure that those pleats stay secure so there's nothing, once you pull those pleating threads out, there won't be anything to keep those pleats together, so you need a back smock. And if you are still with me and enjoyed this video, please let me know. It was definitely a pain in my derriere to film and edit, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do any more of these smocking plates unless the response to this video is amazing, because I'm telling you, I did not enjoy it. Um, but I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.